Ok. Bandana, muy buenos, very, very, este, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is gonna be a, an encounter of traditional medicine in Chiapas. I have been working with local people working on, on traditional medicine and they asked me to organize a co and coordinate this conference. Since I have been working with you for so many years, I was thinking I have to invite Bandana so she can talk about biopiracy, about all yeah. her fight about, against big pharma and corporations, including Monsanto, because are the same seeds of medicines, the, 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 the plants for medicines and the plants that we eat are the same that they are trying to, to steal. So I wonder if you can tell me a little, well, first I, I, I have I have introduced you before before this this record este. so I wonder what is the situation in India right now with the pandemics and how people is curing is relying on occidental allopath medicine or they are also using traditional medicine uh, well um, in India uh, in the villages, people are turning more and more to their own indigenous medicine. And I have watched in these two years, there's such a flourishing of medicinal plants, knowledge about what is healing, what builds humanity, uh, coming back of the grandmother's concoctions and, and the women will get up and tell me, you know, I did not fall ill, I got no infection because I made this kara. And the plants are coming back, the knowledge is coming back. Uh, the government, of course, is promoting the industrial medicine, but we are lucky because we have one of the most ancient systems of formal medicine, Ayurveda, which means the science of life, and the government has a ministry. So they have to also pay lip service to the indigenous healing traditions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so in, I was going to ask you because you wrote this amazing book that is called Biopiracy. And this is like a poem for me. It's so beautiful the way you made the introduction of the description of seeds. Can you tell us why you was inspired to write a book on, on, on biological piracy? Well, you know, in, in, the, in the 80s, I started to see what's wrong with the agriculture. And then in 87, I was invited to a meeting where the chemical giants, whom I call the poison cartel, were wanting to now genetically modify the seed. And we've done so much work together on GMOs and biosafety. And they wanted to do this in order to own the seed. And they talked about patenting seed, but I said, but you don't create a seed. You're just adding a gene. Adding a gene is not the creation of the whole life. And that's the day I decided to start saving seeds, the day I started to create community seed banks, but also start to think about what does this mean? And I wrote the book Biopiracy with two inspirations. One, I said, well, this is exactly like Columbus, isn't it? Columbus lands in the Americas, says he's discovered the land, and it's now the property of the Europeans. Yes. <laughs> and I called patenting of life and patenting of seed and biopiracy the second coming of Columbus. Yes. I called it the second coming of Columbus. Now, at the time when I wrote the book, there was actually no real case of biopiracy. I was talking about what will happen if those who've colonized our lands, those who have created chemicals like glyphosate, now start to own the seed. What's going to happen? They're going to take all our indigenous knowledge and claim they invented it. So there's a case of a biopiracy of an ancient maze in uh, Chiapas, which has nitrogen fixing quality, you know, through the air. It picks up the nitrogen. And of course, the University of Davis and companies have already patented it. And it's a biopiracy. Mm -hmm. um, there's a yellow bean of Mexico. Some trader in America bought it in a market in um, Mexico, took it back home, took a patent on it, and then prevented the Mexicans from bringing in the yellow bean. I have had to fight three big cases. 
1984, we had the disaster of Bhopal when a pesticide plant leaked. And I said, why are we having pesticides when we have lovely trees like the neem, which can control pests? 10 years later, I find it's patented. I fought that case 11 years, the biopiracy of neem, 11 years. And we defeated the US government and the US company, Grace. I come from a valley in the Himalaya, which has a wonderful aromatic rice called basmati. Anywhere in the world, you'll get basmati, the queen of aroma. Yeah. A Texas company claims to have invented this rice. So we fought that case and had it defeated. And our ancient wheats do not go cause gluten allergy. It's the breeding of wheat that has accelerated the expression of gluten. So all the allergies and celiac disease and gluten allergies are really a production of industrial agriculture. So Monsanto thought they'd pattern the old Indian wheats that don't give gluten allergy and have a monopoly on the market. Before that case, I have made a list of 1,500 patents on climate resilient crops with the etc. group and thousands of medicinal plants are being patented. I think it's so good that you are holding this dialogue because big pharma and big chemical come from the same companies. They come from the same material, they're all fossil fuel based and they're the same companies. The same buyers makes the chemicals for me modern medicine. The same buyers make the chemicals for agriculture. And most people, you know, Pfizer's the one pushing this vaccine Monsanto and Pfizer are one. Pfizer bought Pharmacia, which was the owner of Monsanto. So Pfizer and Monsanto are together. The same companies that are poisoning our agriculture are poisoning our bodies. And with glyphosate, with GMOs, they cause more cancer. And when you have cancer, the same companies give you a cancer drug. So for them, it's perpetual profits. And that's why bringing back, A, bringing back our knowledge of biodiversity of healing plants is important, especially in this pandemic. Second, resisting biopiracy is important. Third, we need to be aware that the same companies are now trying to say, let's get rid of this word biodiversity. You know, we, we created the biodiversity convention and now there's an attempt to get rid of it. The word biodiversity. And they want to turn biodiversity into a market asset owned by the financial system. And they want to decide if this makes us money, it'll be under our control. There'll be no indigenous rights. And if, if this doesn't make money, let it go, let it disappear. So we are at a very, very fragile moment where all the indigenous people's struggles to defend their culture and biodiversity have to get stronger and have to become global. You know? When you, when you started Soil Not Oil, you know, that was part of what you wanted to do. But now we need a, a campaign against biopiracy on a world well, scale again. We had it earlier, we need it again. What if we, we organize the biopiracy conference this year, but then... <laughs> yeah. Yes, you must. You, you must. You must do it. And, okay. If you and support connect, me, we're gonna, then, that you know, is going to be the name of the, the, the conference. Biopiracy, biopiracy, I'm sorry in our food, our medicine. So Perfect, you that. must do it. We can talk, we can You work must that. do it, yeah. Another question. Yeah. And we, you know, if, uh -huh. yeah. You know, remember yeah. that we, we've been in Portland many years ago and we've been talking in, in, in our house with Karen in, in when you visit like seven, eight years ago. And I was talking with you about the greeters and how people use these drugs to, 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 to mail the naan, the tortillas, all these kind of salsas, you know, with greeters, with este, molcajetes, yeah. we call them in Mexico. Right. Yeah. And we've been talking about how people is buying water that is with minerals, you know, but in the past without blenders, people mineralize their food with this blender and this kind of it's the greeters, right? Yeah. So what do yeah, you... Or cooking in iron pots, yeah? We we get all the iron from iron pots, yeah. And, and that has to do with how our food was enough to prevent diseases. What is your, your position on, on our food, our medicine, is the, in, in our medicine? Well, I, yeah. I, I think the three things about indigenous food cultures, which are the ancient food cultures, First, we know food is about health, mm -hmm. yeah? So we eat to be healthy. 
we don't eat to make money. We eat to be healthy. And that's why we eat biodiversity. The second thing about our food cultures is we process it in ways that it increases the nutrition. So a tortilla is much more than the maize that made it. Mm -hmm. Because so much has gone to, I know you put a bit of calcium, you put all kinds of things in it. So it is a richer food, just like our foods, you know, through the artisanal processing, we enrich them nutritionally. Whereas the industrial pro processing takes away the nutrition and add toxins, adds additives, which give, make us sick. Mm -hmm. And that, that's why today, the majority of chronic diseases are because of the industrial food system, you know, mm -hmm. diabetes, obesity, cancer, hypertension, neurodegenerative disease, all linked to food. So indigenous food culture, both in the diversity of the base and the processing of it, and our relationship with food as a sacred ceremony. You know, mm -hmm. I was in, in, uh, in Oaxaca for the public hearing on corn mm -hmm. during the days when the fight on GM corn was going on and was very intense. And I remember they, uh, they told me then, that, you know, I didn't know you used to have amaranth like we have in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And they said the Spanish made amaranth illegal because it's a sacred grain, yeah? Mm -hmm. And people had to use it secretly. So the, the sacredness of food has to be brought back because destroying the sacred means destroying our relationship with food. Mm -hmm. And in no... I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm regenerating ceremonies with our communities in India. Every ceremony is related to food. Every ceremony is related to the earth. Every ceremony is related to biodiversity. Mm -hmm. So we are bringing that back. Yeah. Thank you so much. I have a question, another question. Do you think here in Mexico there was a problem because there was a new part of the legislation that they present on, on public health this year? The general public health dictamen has a, a, a clausula or something that is about certifying traditional medicine, practitioners of traditional medicine. So what do you think on that? Because we were fighting back because we don't want them to, to certify. Yeah, who can exactly. It's, it's a bit like the seed issue. When we started to save seeds, there was an attempt by government to say you can only have registered seed. I said, no, no, we know our seed and we know what's good seed. And this is a community resource and it is community knowledge and it is community governance. The same applies for mm -hmm. food, that we know this is our food, we know what's nutrition and healthy and our healers, we know our healers. Communities will certify them, not you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and regarding this, do you think that all politicians are the same or we can educate some politicians that can become our allies? Is it possible? Well, you know, watching Mexico from a, from a, Mexico from a distance, you've had saying no to GMOs, you've had a no to glyphosate, your environment minister was threatened and left. So Mexico is fighting back and I think you should definitely use all like-minded people in government to defend the rights of indigenous people and allow our cultures to flourish. And, and we have to reach them out to educate them, of course, right? We have yes. to, yeah. to use all kinds yeah. of tools available. And yeah. you know, you you was part to you support us when we did the, the class action lawsuit against Monsanto at the Mexican government, the past administration. So the new government just make a decree este, banning all kind of GMOs, GMO corn in Mexico, mm -hmm. permits for GMO corn. Yeah. And, and you, you was here and you was interviewed by Aristegui, that is one of the main anchor news este, journalists in, in Mexico. And, and we are so grateful that you came to support us several times with Adelita San Vicente Tello. And este, so, and the other question, I, maybe you have still some time, is on how, what do you think about the future of these big farm and these pandemics? What is this, the, the two or three scenarios that you can see yeah. for the next couple of years? 
Well, the first scenario I see is that the pandemic is more about controlling people than uh, health. It's, and, and no recipe is a medical recipe, you know? Uh, all of it is about surveillance and surveillance and surveillance and surveillance. Yeah. So they're trying to establish the surveillance society using the pandemic. And therefore we have to understand every step and defend our freedom. We have to also keep a plurality of health systems alive. Because since when did the poison makers become the healers of the planet? Yeah. How can a group of those who've sold poisons be trusted with the health of the whole world? Yeah. So the way we worked on Monsanto is the way we have to work on Big Pharma. They are the same. They are not here to heal us. They're here to make money. Yes. And, and we have proven through the years that we have been defeating them since, you know, the Prop 27 in California, we change yeah. things, you know, the, the, we educate people through campaigns with you and yeah. many people that were around in California in 2011, 12, 13, 14. And that changed the, the way people see food in, in, the, in the U.S. in many ways. In Mexico, we see that we, we gain this is the campaign against Monsanto in the past administration that tried to give the permits. Do you think that we have a chance uh, uh, with all the media coverage that is terrible, you know, and it's creating fear in people, we have a chance to, 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 to defeat them in, in, education, in an educational way yeah. to overcome this? Miguel, Miguel, I've always believed, like Margaret Mead, that it takes a tiny community of committed people to bring change. You know, the word mass is used for people who work blindly. So there will be a large number who will be convinced by the propaganda of fake news, you know, purchase news, bought news. But they, they have never been the change makers. Mm -hmm. They have always been the blind absorbers of messages. So you don't need to think of how you change them. The way we work is organize the people who understand what's at stake, who understand why nature must be protected, biodiversity must be protected, indigenous cultures must be protected, people's rights must be defended. We have to bring bigger coalitions of those people and ensure that they are not marginalized. That's our work. Mm -hmm. In, do you have a, uh, do you have a, an input on on traditional medicine or how many plants have been patented around the world and how many plants are oh, not thousands, thousands, thousands. I mean, I know for India, nine thousand medicinal plants of India have been patented in America. And so they belong now to corporations. No, they can't belong to. They have a piece of paper. Okay, yes, yes, of course. If we, if we stop using them, and if we stop, if we start saying it belongs to you, then it belongs to them. This is how I started seed saving in Nathania. I said, they want to own the seed, but we have to take care of the seed. As long as the seed is in our hands, they cannot own it. Mm -hmm. As long as the medicinal plants are in our forests and in our gardens, and we are using them, no patent has any value. They're pieces of paper. Yes, yes, it's true. And, and it's the, tell, tell me what are your projects these days so people can know what- My I'm projects are, are the same projects. My projects are saving seeds, protecting biodiversity, making connections between food and health, that big food, big poison, big pharma are the same, but our food, our health, and the planet's health are the same. So building this bigger unity and, and, um, and protecting our knowledge, you know, not letting our knowledge ever be forgotten. Because the day we forget, the day we forget this plant is good for this, it's dead anyway. Mm -hmm. That's why we can't allow the disappearance of a healing plant or the disappearance of the woman who knows that healing plant. And that's why we must, you know, create what I created in India, grandmother's universities, older people teaching younger people, you know, what these values are, yeah. Passing the, the information. I remember that I read an article and a say from South Korea, 
that in 1970s, 1870, 80% of the population were working in rural areas, growing food. And then with the modernization and all the factories, the switch shops that came to South Korea, people went to work in these factories. And I remember reading about in 2011, some ladies that were working for four years in these factories, they decide to go back into the soil, remembering what they were growing when they were, when they, where they were growing when they were 15 or 16 years old. And they start bringing back all this information, but if they would have stayed away 10 more years, maybe they would have died and all the information have died. Exactly. Knowledge is key. Knowledge is absolutely key. So I wish you the best of greetings from India to the Chiapas. Thank you so the much. From plants of India to the plants of the Chiapas, from the people of India to the people of the Chiapas. And may your conference go well and all strength to you. Thank you, Miguel. I hope to see you soon in, in person, Bandana. I hope you have okay. a chance to come and visit okay. my project. Thank you so much for everything. Bye -bye. We're going to tell soon. Thank you so much Bye. for your help and your support. Bye. Bye.